Father, I pray that you would take the lesson tonight and help us to be more like Christ in this area of loving one another. And Father, I want our church to be a very balanced church. I want us to be uh, much like we talked on Sunday night. I want us to be able to uh, be zealous soul winners. Uh, on the other hand, to be uh, strict students of the Bible. I want us to have zeal and knowledge and grace and truth and love uh, and beauty. And, and Lord, I, 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 I want our people tonight, and myself included, to uh, love more like you love. And so, Father, tonight help us to understand where you want us to uh, be in this level of love, and I pray you would take the Word of God tonight as we look at it and use it to speak to our hearts. Stir us tonight, and I pray that we would be better Christians. I pray that we would love you and serve you better, and I pray that we would treat one another uh, the way that you treat us more than we already do because of what we're about to hear tonight. So, Father, bless us, please. We ask now these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Look at Matthew chapter 5 with me tonight, verse 43. You have heard that it, is, it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, Love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you, that you may be the children of your Father which is in heaven, for he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. For if you love them which love you, what reward have ye? Do not even the publicans the same? And if you salute your brethren only, what do you more than others? Do not even the publicans so? Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. I'm going to talk to you tonight about the topic of love and uh, where I want you to get tonight is supernatural love. That's where God wants us to be. God allows uh, different events and different people to enter our lives to teach us how to love more deeply. Uh, many years ago, I began to pray and ask God to help me to love like He loved. And I did not uh, really or fully understand how God would answer that prayer. I thought uh, somewhat uh, magically, or if you will, that God would just help me to, to love like He loves. But he brought uh, a, a particular person into my life, and I will not go into the story tonight, but it's an early history of our church, a, a man <clears throat> that came into our ministry and uh, was basically a, a wolf in sheep's clothing, and uh, he came out to be a man that was behind what we were doing, and uh, a man that was reached in just the early days before our church even started. Uh, I knocked on his door, didn't speak to him personally that day, but he got our flyer of our new church starting, called me, and uh, we had a great conversation. We met, and I fully believe that he wanted to get behind our new church and, and help us to get it off the ground. And in the early stages, he was quite a blessing. The first people that ever got baptized at our church, we took to his house and baptized them in uh, his swimming pool, and uh, him and his wife were very gracious to us. However, I did not know that this man had alter ulterior motives to kind of come into the church in a new work especially, and uh, he began to undermine me and some of the things that were happening in the church. I would preach on Sunday morning, and he would basically go home on Sunday afternoon, and those in our church in those early days who he had their email addresses, he would basically pick apart my sermons, and he was trying to slowly pull people away from me uh, unto him. Uh, and I don't know if he was going to try to take over the church and run me out um, or what his plans were, but uh, he began to not only do that but blaspheme my family and uh, lie about me and, and all kinds of other things. By the way, I told him uh, there's a lot more things that are truthful uh, about me that uh, you can spread all the lies you want, but uh, don't tell everything that's true about me. But... Uh, it, that's supposed to be a joke. But anyways, um, this man hurt our church very badly. It came in on a Sunday night, and he was he, many of his family members were in our church. He had about 20 people, I believe, in his own family that were here. By the way, I won his wife to Christ. I uh, Something that he couldn't do in all his years of being married to her. She was a staunch Catholic. Uh, he could never win her to Christ. I won her to Christ, baptized her. Uh, I baptized and won to Christ. Uh, his grandchildren, all of his grandchildren, his son-in-law, I believe, his daughter, uh, uh, most of his family members that lived here in Stockton, I personally went to Christ or they came to Christ in our church services. I personally baptized them. 
And but however, this man turned on me and turned on the church. And uh, again, I believe never had his heart where he claimed to have it in the beginning, anyways. But he hurt me very badly. We came in on Sunday night and. Uh, the early days of our church, our, th- our church was thriving, and, and we would pack this place out pretty much on a Sunday night, and uh, Sunday night uh, happened, and I had confronted this man just uh, a few days before because of uh, uh, finding out about what he was doing, and of course, behind my back, he began to pull people out, especially his own family, where we would usually have this auditorium packed out on a Sunday night. Uh, we came in one Sunday night, and there was... Uh, just about a handful of people here. And the people that were here looked around and said, Pastor, what happened? What happened? And I said, I don't know. And that was the beginning of some very uh, rocky uh, road and some very rough sailing. I remember coming home that Sunday night, and I don't know uh, if I got ill because of all the events that were going on and just the hurt I felt and uh, working so hard for several months to get the church off the ground, and, and now just kind of, uh, I was seeing it crumble before my eyes. Uh, but I, I literally got physically sick that night, and I told my wife I, I was just going to go to bed early. This was after the Sunday night service. I remember going into the office. We lived on Vine Street there uh, near downtown Stockton at that time, and I had a little office in our house there. And I remember going in and closing the door and falling on my face there on the rug before I went to bed. And I couldn't much pray that night. My heart was broken and uh, thinking of the people that left our church and uh, wondering what was the future of our ministry. It seemed like everything just fell apart uh, just within a few days. And I remember not being able really to say anything to God, but I, 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 I was so heartbroken and tears flowing and I just said over and over again, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God, just uh, couldn't really get the words out, but uh, exposing my heart to God. God did not speak to me audibly. The room did not light up, but the Holy Spirit very clearly spoke to my heart that night. And God said, uh, I answered your prayer. And I said, God, what are you talking about? He said, he said, get up and quit praying. He said, I answered your prayer. And uh, I did not talk audibly back to God, but in my spirit, I uh, communicated with his Holy Spirit. And I said, God, what prayer? And he said, don't you remember that you have been praying for me to ask you to help you to love like I love? And I said, yes, God. And he said, I just answered your prayer. He said, now get up and start loving like I love. And what I realized is that God had allowed somebody that was very unlovely, very evil to enter my life to answer my prayer for many years. God, help me to love like you love. And God reminded me that night that it it takes a, a supernatural love to love like God. It's very easy for us to uh, look, look, look in your Bible here if you're still in Matthew chapter 5, and we're going to get to this in just a moment. But, but God said, verse 46, For if you love them which love you, what reward have you? They're not even the publicans the same. And God said, It's no great feat for you and I to, to love those tonight that are lovely. But God said, I am looking for some people that uh, want to go beyond that and want to really love like I love. And God said, So what I do is I send people and events into your life that, that will literally shake you up and hurt you very deeply to see if you will really want to love like I do. You know what, as a pastor for these many years and as a Christian for even longer, I, I find that there aren't too many people that want to love like that. It amazes me, it will never cease to amaze me, how shallowly most of God's people love. Most of God's people, uh, not most, but many can be in a church for years and years and years. In one line, one sermon, they'll take their family, never come back again. Uh, and we certainly do not love like God loves. Now, our lives are full of opportunities where our love can grow and can be depleted and will be tested. And I'm not going to go into a lot of that tonight, but uh, there are basically five layers uh, or levels, if you will, of love. And I want to take you through the Bible tonight and show you these different levels. And I want to show you where God wants all of us to get tonight. The major points will be on your outline so you can follow them tonight. Now, it's God's desire that we grow from a natural love 
to a supernatural love. A lady in our church recently came up to me and said, Pastor, uh, she was in our, our early lessons as we were teaching on how to get along, and I taught one night about uh, forgiving and letting bitterness go, and she came up to me, Pat, and she said, Pastor, tears flowing down her eyes, uh, she said, uh, uh, I, 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 I can't do this, I, I've tried to do it many years, I can't let go of the hurt uh, of certain people in my life, and she named uh, two of those people, two people that uh, were very close to her, uh, dear family members, and should be should have been the most encouraging people in her life through her growing up, but they weren't. She said, Pastor, I'm going to be real honest with you. I can't do what you said that I'm supposed to do tonight. I just can't let go of that hurt and that pain. And I said, I can't keep you from hurting, but what I'm trying to teach you tonight is not to let that hurt go to bitterness. But I said, dear ma'am, what you need and what you are trying to do, you cannot do it yourself. You're right. It is a supernatural thing. And you need the supernatural power of God to help you to do that. And I said, that's why most people will go through their life just like you, never letting go, never forgiving, never loving those that hurt you, because it is something that's very supernatural, and most people don't want to get there or pay the price to get there. It's much easier, not better, but it's much easier to go through life bitter and hurt and angry than to love like God and to love those that hate you and bless those that curse you and, and, and take the man that tries to run your ministry and pray for him almost every day of, 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 of your life as I, I do. I, I see his picture. He's kind of a somewhat prominent man here in our city. I often see his picture. I pray for that man all the time. Uh, I've prayed for God to bless him, and I believe he's pretty blessed tonight. And I believe one of the reasons he is is because there's one pastor that he hurt very dearly that said, God, I'm not going to let that man destroy me or my ministry, and God, the best I can, I'm going to love that man like you love me and you love him. And I've prayed for God to bless that man and keep that man's wife and children and grandchildren saved. I don't want, it, I, I don't want any hurt to come to that man. And God taught me how to love a little bit like him. How do you do it? By sending somebody to hurt me very badly. That's how God loves. Oh, we don't understand tonight how we hurt and grieve the heart of God, and yet he loves us no matter what we do. Let's go on this little journey tonight. We're going to talk about the basic levels. None of these levels are wrong, but God wants us to grow in, in, in these areas of love. So on your outline tonight, uh, let me get the copy that you have here. And I want to make sure that I kind of go along with you as well. But on your notes, there, there's five layers of love. Number one is the natural love. Natural love. And uh, let's see, I, I didn't put it on your outline, but take your Bible with me. Go to Romans. Romans chapter number uh, one tonight. You can get there pretty quickly. We're in Matthew. We'll be back in Matthew here in just a moment. But look at Romans chapter one. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, and Romans Romans chapter 1, I want you to look at verse 26 and 27 with me there. The Bible says, For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. Likewise also the men leaving the natural use of the woman burned in their lust one toward another, men with men working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves the recompense of their error which was meet. We're talking about natural love. Now what is natural love? It is a love that a mother has for a child. Uh, it, it is a built-in love that is natural and very easy to do. And now that, that love can be perverted, and that's what's talked about here in Romans chapter 1, where God said the love of a woman, the love of a man, that love can be perverted. Uh, and by, by the way, go on record that, that homosexuality is, is not a lifestyle choice. You're not, it's not a, uh, a preference uh, or a, a uh, uh, way that you're born into. It, 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 it is a preference. It's a sin preference. It, 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 it's, it's not a, a, a way that someone is born. It is a way that someone chooses. And often uh, through circumstances of life, there are certain things that push people down that road more so than other. So that natural love can be perverted uh, we certainly know mamas and daddies that uh, have turned in their love and care for their own children. But God said, within the heart of everybody beats a love tonight. It's very easy. As a daddy, it's very easy for me to love my kids. They can hurt me and they can say things often that I don't love. But I've never, uh, ever uh, uh, waned in my love for them at all. It's a natural love that beats it. You mamas know what I'm talking about. 
Uh, and uh, it, it, it's a very easy thing to do. Now, this love, although, again, it can be per- perverted, it dwells in all of us. It dwells in all of us. Now, uh, we want to grow beyond that, though. Take your Bibles now. Go back to Matthew. And I want you to see Matthew chapter number 5 tonight. Matthew 5, where we just were. We'll spend a little bit of time here this evening. Matthew chapter 5, and I want you to look at verse number 46. And the Bible says here, verse 46, For if you love them which love you, what reward have you? Do not even the publicans the same. The second level of love is what I call selfish love. Selfish love, Matthew 5, 46. Now, selfish love is a reciprocal love. This type of love says, I'll, I'll love you as long as you're lovely. I love you, Pastor, as long as I, I come to the church and you never say anything to offend me. I love the church as long as everything's going my way. I love my spouse as long as the marriage is going well and I'm getting what I, I want and what I need. Uh, and it, 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 it's that selfish love. I, I call it the Janet Jackson love, What Have You Done For Me Lately, uh, her old hit song. And that's what it is. It's, it, it's a love that says, I'll love you as long as you're lovely. I'll love you as long as you give me something back. It's love that says, I love you as long as, as you'll meet my needs. I, I've told you the story a long time ago. Many of you be the first time you heard it. But uh, in, in uh, uh, the, I, I, I want to say it was the, one of the, the Gulf Wars, but I, I'm not quite sure. Don't hold me to this. But there were two men that were burned very badly. And they had burns all over their body uh, from uh, battle. And they ended up both, uh, they shipped them stateside, and they were both in the same hospital room together uh, trying to recover from uh, severe third-degree burns literally all over their body. They're very grotesque. Uh, their, their bodies were just uh, deformed uh, uh, beyond, uh, I, I, not recognition, but it's very grotesque to look at both of these men. Both of them were married, and uh, they were barely hanging on to life. Uh, one of the men got news that his wife uh, was going to come, and she had flew, flew across uh, the United States to come and be with her husband. And, of course, uh, anxiety filled his heart, knowing how he looked, and he's very grotesque looking, and knowing the shock that would be uh, to his wife as she came in that hospital room and saw him for the first time. And uh, that man laid there that day, and his wife walked into that room, and she went up and saw the form of what used to be her handsome husband burned and uh, just sores and pus and just a grotesque figure to look at. And she took that wedding ring off of her hand and she put that wedding ring on the uh, little nightstand there by his hospital bed. And she said, I'm sorry, I cannot be married to you. And she walked out of that hospital room. The story goes that within a few days, that, that man, he, in, in the pain of his wife leaving him, he uh, died. He, he just gave up the fight to, lo- to live anymore. Well, the other man that was in the room with him also got news that his wife was coming in. And he, of course, had just witnessed what happened to this other man. It had been several days since that event. The day came when his wife arrived. Of course, anxiety filled his heart. He's very grotesque-looking like the other man was, and his wife came into that room and stood by his bed and looked on him, and he looked up at her through those burned eyelids and uh, scarring all across his face, and he had one little area that really somehow is just a miracle that escaped the burning, and literally his whole body had been scarred, but one little area on his forehead was clear, and the skin was still fairly healthy, and his dear wife bent over and uh, put her lips on that one little area of his forehead and kissed him and said, I love you, honey. And she said, we're going to get through this together. And uh, I don't have to tell you, but that man pulled through. And he had the strength and he had the love of that wife to, to rally something deep within his heart and pull him through uh, that tragic, tragic uh, uh, affliction where that other man passed away. Why? Because love, love was absent. And love was present. Tom Williams, his great evangelist and man of prayer, was in Romania many years ago. And I've heard him tell this story personally, uh, that he was in an orphanage. He was preaching over in Romania. And the pastor said, Brother Tom, I want you to go see one of the orphanages that we have here in our city. And he walked into that orphanage. It was literally just little babies. 
and no children in there at all, just all infants and cribs all up and down, a dormitory uh, type room. And uh, there was just a, a couple nurses uh, just kind of milling around. And uh, Brother William said, as I, I walked through and just bed babies everywhere, he said, I, something st- strike me that, that I, I just thought was uh, uh, kind of strange. N- not one of those babies was crying. And he said, so I went up and I, I asked the head nurse, I said, ma'am, I said, why are none of these babies crying? And, and uh, she said, uh, Brother William, she said, they stopped crying a long time ago. He said, well, what are you talking about? And, and, and uh, she said, we have nobody to even pick up those babies. We have nobody to hold those babies. And they come in here and they cry and they cry and they finally realize nobody's coming to pick them up. Nobody's coming to love them. He said, Brother Williams, we just can't do it. It's just me and a, another lady or so. And there's no way we cannot uh, get around to these babies. And they eventually just stop crying. He said, what happens to them? And she said, they, they die. They die because they have no love. And uh, that second level of love that, that most people kind of just stick at is a very selfish love. It's that love that says, you know, uh, uh, as the Bible says, I'll love you as long as you love me. And God said, the very wickest, wickedest people on the face of the earth can love like that. Now, we all have a form of that, and it's not bad in and of itself because it's very natural in our sinful condition to love people that are lovely and to like those that like us, and we kind of click together. But, but God said, I'm looking for somebody tonight to get beyond that, to get beyond that level. Number one, natural love. Number two, a selfish love. Uh, and then take your Bibles with me. Go to First John tonight. First John. I believe if every marriage would get what I'm talking about tonight, if every church would grasp this kind of love, there'd never be anybody that would leave a good church again. There'd never be a pastor that would get up and quit his church because he did not love his people. There'd never be a husband that would leave his wife or a wife that would leave her husband. If we really love like God loves, sadly, many don't. Many never will. First John chapter 4. Let's look there tonight. First John chapter 4 and look at verse number... 10 herein is love, verse 10 now, not that we love God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sins. This third type of love is what we call a spiritual love. It's a spiritual love. This is a type of love that that chooses to love somebody we've not previously known and who has done nothing to us up to that or for us up to that point. It it is a, a, a love that makes a decision that I I, I didn't know you. I often say this, and I don't know how many people believe me when I say it, but I, I mean it with all my heart. When somebody walks through the doors of our church, I decide at that point to love them. I don't know them, and people say, you, Pastor, you don't even know who walking into that door. I know that, but I love them because God brought them in here. Uh, that's why I stand up for everybody in our church. I don't want anybody ever badmouth anybody talk in a way that is making fun of anybody that ever comes to this church because you're talking about someone I love. And I'm going to let that go. Um, But it's a spiritual love. It's a a love that a a husband has uh, for his wife or a man and a woman who begin to date. And then they they think, well, this thing's going to get a little bit more serious. And they, they decide to... Uh, love one another. I don't like the term, I fell in love with her. I think better is I decided to love. If you fall in love, you can fall out of love. When I decided to love my wife, I don't believe I fell in love with her. I was attracted to her in many different ways, but I, I remember very specifically the night I decided to love her. Long before I ever told her I loved her, I went to God and told God I loved her. I made that commitment that I love my wife to God more or f- before I ever made it to my wife. I told my wife I loved her on July 4th, and we were married on July 7th, the year later. Amen? And, uh, but uh, long before I told her I loved her, I told God. Why? Because I, I, as a spiritual love, I made a decision. God said, here in his love, not, not that we loved him, but that he first loved us. See, God, God said... It, well, he is love, but humanly speaking a little bit as I, uh, forgive me, but, but God said, I'm going to decide to love you whether you love me or not. It's a spiritual love. 
this is, again, a form of Christ love toward us. Now, uh, nothing wrong with that. Certainly very admirable, for, admirable form of love. And we're certainly climbing up that ladder now. Let's take our Bibles and go to John chapter 15. And these references are on your outline here. John chapter 15. We had a natural love. It's the natural love every <coughs> mother has for a baby, every daddy has. It's built within us. We have a selfish love that's reciprocal. We have a spiritual love that says, I, I'm deciding to love you. I'm making a commitment to love you. Here in his love. And then uh, go to John chapter 15. Let me get there tonight as well. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John chapter 15. Look at verse number 13 with me. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. The answer to your point number four there is greater love. Greater love. Now, greater love literally means to have a sacrificial love. It's a love of a true friend. It's a love that that lady had to her husband that said, Honey, we're going to get through this thing together. I don't care if you're scarred and burned and disfigured and and grotesque. Long time ago, I decided to marry you, and you laid down your life for me. By the way, that soldier that, that said, I'm willing to fight and die and get burned all over my body for my country that that soldier had a greater love men have a greater love for their country they say i'm going to lay down my life if need be i'll give my life for my nation thank god that america's history has been men and women have been willing to love this nation uh for whatever reason so much that we sit here tonight free because they said i'm willing to die and shed my blood on foreign soil so that my Country can go on in freedom. That's a great love. Great love. That's what Christ did on Calvary. He who knew no sin became sin. And again, if every Christian would have that kind of love that says, you know what, you can hurt me, you can curse me, you can do whatever you want for me, but bless God, I will lay down my life for you. A pastor knows that kind of love if he's a good pastor. I often say that I, I, I will be a doormat. You can walk all over me. And so many people say, I, I, I never let people walk over me. And you will never love like God loves. Because we trample all over His grace and mercy every single day of our lives. And yet He still loves us. Greater love, it's a love of a true friend. It's a love a soldier has for his country who's willing to put his life on the line for it. Now, these are all forms of love. I'm going to wrap it up tonight. There's nothing wrong with any of these forms In and of themselves, however, it is God's desire that we reach the fifth level. Now take your Bibles and go back to Matthew chapter 5 and we'll be done here tonight. Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5 and verse number 44. Right about where we began tonight. There we go. Verse number 44. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you, that you may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. This fifth type of love, again, is the supernatural love. This is where I wanted to get to tonight. This is a love, again, that only God can give you. This is a love that loves people who have no love for you at all. This is a love where most Christians will never get. It's a love that, that, that most people will never achieve because, again, it is easier to say, I, I, I just can't give up the hurt and the pain. I can't forgive. It's not better to go through life like that, but it, it'll, it'll kill those people and destroy those people that harbor that hurt and pain and bitterness. But it is easier for people to hold on to that than to give it up and say, I'm going to choose to love like God loves. I'm going to love that person that has no love at all for me. They have ran my name through the mud. They've destroyed my reputation. I don't know if you've ever been there, there's nothing that hurts worse than to be accused of something you didn't do and... The accuser gets everybody in the world that will listen to him to get him or them to believe him. And that pain and that hurt, knowing that you are innocent of that accusation, burns and hurts within you. But God says, when you can love that person, he says, you've got to wear I am. Supernatural. As I told that lady in our church several weeks ago, tears running down her face, and she said, Pastor, I, I, I can't do it. 
I just can't do it. I've been trying for years and years and years to let it go. You don't understand. I said, no, I, I understand, but I want to tell you, dear lady, you right. You can't do it. It is supernatural. God must give you that type of love. Examples of a, uh, well, this is a love that loves people who have no love for you. To love like this, by the way, is the closest way you can be like God. I'm saying tonight, as long as you have critics, as long as you have enemies, God is bringing you to the point where you can exhibit a love like only He can give you. Listen, every critical, every hateful, every cursed, persecuting person or situation that you come across or that crosses your path is an opportunity for you and for me to exercise a supernatural God-given love. God says, I bring enemies and I bring uh, situations uh, in front of your life to see, uh, do you want to love like I do or you just want to be like the, the status quo? Why in the world would I want to have all that happen? Because there's a small fraternity tonight of people that love like God. And boy, when you begin to love, and I haven't arrived there at all tonight, but I know a little bit about it. And I, there's an there's a intim- intimacy and a closeness that you get with God. That these Christians that say, not me, I'm not letting that go. I'm not forgiving that person. Love them? No, no way. Okay, you are distancing yourself from the overwhelming love and intimacy of God. And you'll never know it until you're willing to take the enemies and the slander and the hurt and the pain and the suffering and the heartache that God puts across your path. And instead of getting bitter and pointing fingers, and getting mad at God, and getting unforgiven, you turn around and you love those very objects that bring you the most pain. And when you do that, you've achieved a supernatural love. Every critical, hateful, cursed, and persecuting person or situation is an opportunity for us to exercise this God-given love. Let me give you three simple ways I believe that or things that you must continually be doing in order, order to have it, and we'll wrap it up tonight. Helps in possessing a supernatural love. Letter A on your outline, you need to spend much time in the Bible. Everything God's ever done, He's done through His Word. You will never love like God loves if you're not a student of the Bible. I'm talking about every day. Every day. You need to read this Bible till your heart burns within you. I guarantee you, if you're not a student of the Bible, every cotton-picking day of your life, if you don't fight to be in that book and you don't learn to love the Word of God, you will never love like God. You cannot separate the love of Christ from the Bible because that book is Jesus. Jesus is the Word of God. And again, it is something that is supernatural. It is, it's not within our sinful nature to love those that hurt us, to love those that, that spite us, to pray for those that despitefully use us. It is a supernatural love, and you only get it through the Word of God. I don't know how it works. It's not spooky, but I know everything that God does, He does through His Word. And if you are going to stay in this church till death do us part, if you're going to get married someday and stay in that marriage when all hell's trying to pull it apart, if you're going to love your children when they're very unlovely, and you're going to love those people that God brings in your life that hurt you and slander you, and you're going to say, God, I'm going to be that one Christian that loves like you. You better be a student of that book right there. I'm talking about years and years and years of reading it every day of your life. That's how you learn to love like God loves. Most people don't even have the love for that Bible, and they wonder why they can't have a marriage that is successful. Let her be. Let's spend much time in prayer. God says there, Matthew chapter 5 and verse 44, He says, I say to you, love your enemies. But He goes on to say, pray for them, which despitefully use you. I don't pray for that man that I talked about in the beginning of the the lesson tonight more than anybody in this church, but I'll tell you what, he's right up there. He's right up there in my prayer list. About every, I wouldn't say every day, but several times a week, he's on my heart. You need to learn to pray. I found a, a long time ago... If, if if I learn to pray for those that hurt me and I learn to pray for those that, that, that are unkind, it's very hard to hate them. I told you a couple weeks ago, a church I was in, about the only good thing about that church was a line that the pastor said one time. He said, some of you young men that struggle with lust and 
I'm talking about young ladies in this church here. He says, the next time that you have lustful thoughts, he says, why don't you do this? Realize that they're a child of God. And instead of lusting after them, he said, take their name to, to God in prayer and pray for God to keep them holy and decent and pure. And he said, I guarantee you, as you pray for that young lady like that, you will not be able to pray for them like that and lust in your heart for them like you do now at the same time. And boy, I learned a great truth through that statement that if I learn to pray for those that hate me and pray for those that use me and pray for those that, that bring tremendous pain to my life, it's very hard for me as I pray for them to hate them like they hate me. And prayer changes things. We often say that, but prayer changes people. And the number one person prayer changes is the person praying. And I guarantee you, if God ever gets you to the point, if your prayer tonight is, God, help me to love like you love, help me to love my wife like that, or my husband like that, or my church like that, God, help me to love you like that, help me to love my family like that, then God's going to let some hurt and pain come. But when you learn to fall on your face, and if all you can say is, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God, God will break your heart if you learn to pray like that, and he'll teach you to love like him. Again, I can't explain how it happens, but it happens. But people that are good in prayer for others are people that love like God. And then let her see just very practical tip tonight how to possess supernatural love is you need to have a healthy realization of who you are. And that's a sinner saved by grace. I can't get too mad at some man that tries to destroy my ministry when I realize I'm a wicked sinner just like that man is. And the God that loves me is the same God that loves him. And how can I spend the rest of my life being bitter and angry and hurtful and unloving against another sinner when I am a wicked sinner myself? And we have a pride that we possess. And a con the Bible says but only by pride cometh contention. And really at the root of every bitter, angry a uh, person that says, I'm not going to let go it, 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 it is, is that pride. And they have that pride because they don't realize who they are. And I've dealt with so many bitter people. And they say, Pastor, I can't let go. And, and I, I can't let go of that hurt. And, and, and if I poke and prod and I get to their heart, eventually they'll say, but you don't understand. I'm not like they are. I'm not like they are, Pastor. And I want to say, yes, you are. You may not have said the things that they've said. You may not have hurt others like they hurt others, but you are a sinner just like they are. And until you realize that, you'll never love like God and you'll never forgive them. Never. I realize who I am tonight. That's why you can leave this church, you can slander my name and drag it through the mud, and I will love you because I choose to and because I realize I've slandered God's name and I've run his name through the mud and I do it almost daily in my heart or in my mind or with my deeds and he still loves me. Though I forget him and wander away, still he doth love me wherever I stray. Back to his dear loving arms would I flee when I remember that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves even me. If he loves me like that and he is perfect and sinless, how can I be hurtful to another sinner? If we would get this tonight, it would revolutionize our church, our marriages, our friendships, every relationship of life, and it would draw us closer to God. I hope somebody here tonight wants to love like God loved. We have those five layers, natural, selfish, spiritual, greater, and then supernatural. And uh, let's do those three things tonight. Much time in Bible, prayer, and a healthy realization of who we are. We'll take our offering tonight. And, uh, Paul, if you can come up and help with that, I'd appreciate it. Let's go to prayer tonight. Our Father, we love you. You're a wonderful God. Father, I thank you that you are the very definition of love. I thank you, Father, that long before you ever loved any one of us in this room, that, or the, the, rather that we ever loved you, you first loved us. Thank you, Father, that even tonight if we sat here and had no love in our heart for you. It, it's overwhelming to me, but you still love us. The person tonight that curses you, denies your very existence, you love him. Amazing love. Amazing love. Lord, may there be something that burns within our heart tonight to want what only you can give us. 
We're so selfish. We're so proud. Father, help us to be more like Christ. Bless the message tonight. And now, Father, as we give towards the cause of missions, would you use this offering to reach people all over the world, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Name. Amen. Name.